Don in London. Hello. May the 26th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. My behaviour, equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be in the right place, with the right people, doing the right things. And a lot of the time it was about show. It was about showing up and looking right. And that's how it ended up, trying to pretend to be okay with the people, with the place and with the things. Always trying and very trying. So these days I've stopped doing that, trying to show up and pretend to be okay. Because for a long time I wasn't. And I was dependent on alcohol, I was then addicted to alcohol, and I ended up alone on a park bench, not wanting to be in touch with family, friends, community and all the medical people who had helped me along the way because I was ashamed of what had happened, angry and resentful, hating myself and hating my behaviour. So these days it's different. I don't hate myself, I don't hate my behaviour, although every day my behaviour could improve. So what's helped me find a way out of being addicted to everything, substance and behaviour, because I don't think we can get away from both. We seem to have the malady in spades in the end. How did it happen? Well, I absolutely admitted to myself I could not do this on my own. I was alone, still trying to pretend, and then I realised, you know, that life was ending quickly. And I accepted that. It almost felt that it was worthwhile dying just to let everything go. And then I thought to myself, well, if that is it, if this is as bad as it can get, and I guess it could get worse, it did in some respects in recovery, because I had to learn how to be sober. But that moment of clarity was very clear. I can't do it on my own. I have got an illness. Maybe I should accept it is an illness, and it's not just me. Because I was prejudiced so heavily against me and what I'd become. The very last thing I thought I could be. So it took a long while, and many, many years, of trying to stop drinking on my own. Self-will, I thought, would win through. But self-will just ended up as a failure because I didn't know the nature of my illness and that is addiction is the inability to stop doing something which is harmful in terms of behaviour or using a substance to fix myself and there was the key I had to stop fixing me and start living as I am and as I was an addict who needed help so what helped me? Well, again, family, friends, community, medical people kept me alive long enough to get to a fellowship called AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And it was a long, long journey of resentfulness about the people in AA because they seemed happy and joyful, well, some of the time, and also very angry and resentful, just like me, some of the time. Because on any given day in the fellowship of AA, we have people who are new, people who have been around a long time, who can be equally angry and resentful at what the world seems to be doing to us. And it seems like it, the world is against us, but it's not. It's just the way life is, just for today. So when I got to AA, frightened I was of relapse, frightened that if I kept on drinking I would die, and frightened enough to think it was okay to try and live might sound strange and I wondered if it was worth it I didn't have any self-esteem no confidence there were vestiges of ego putting on a brave face and pretending that life could be okay but the more I pretended the longer my recovery into some sort of solution seemed to take and if I'd been more open honest and willing to change my attitudes and behavior towards myself and the rest of the world, then maybe my recovery would have been faster. But we can only go at the rate we can go. So 
Fellowship AA, full of unique, authentic people, just like me. And so different, but we have one similarity, a desire not to drink on a daily basis. So we won't like everybody we meet in AA, and we won't necessarily fall in love with the program of 12 steps and 12 traditions very quickly, because it's against everything we've done before, most likely. But underpinning the whole thing is a desire to be sober and to be open, honest and willing to change and keep on being open, honest and willing to change on a daily basis which requires a certain amount of humility or the ability to keep on learning however you want to call it but humility is a good word because it just means I can say I don't know I don't know how to do this and I was able to say that at a meeting last night there are very many things I just don't know how to do but in AA there's probably somebody who does know or can share how they did something doesn't mean it's the right way for me but it might be a guide, a guiding light towards a way of living and life working again so at the beginning of every meeting of AA and I have to emphasize what we see is what we get on any given day it changes day by day the fellowship changes day by day some people are in some people are out some people are new some people just die of old age or other things they get just because they've been alive long enough that's the way it is you know life keeps on happening and the good news if we are sober first the rest of life can be worked out it may not be the way we want it to be but it will cover our needs needs met once forgotten so AA the, the preamble which is shared at the beginning of every meeting and I share here just to slow me down in, into the moment of now because the only moment I've got is now where things can change it goes like this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution it does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety which means that we, get, we keep our affiliations and our faith, courage, whatever it happens to be is unique to us and we have uh, alliances with organisations be they political or religious depending on our belief system but not everybody's is the same indeed the only similarity you will find in a room full of uh, fellowship is that we have a desire to be sober but that can be questionable too because a lot of us when we first start are very angry and we want to keep on drinking because that's what saved us in the end from goodness knows what but then became our prisoner or our jailer both we were the prisoner and jailer of our own making but that is the problem you know it's a, a shame and guilt thing often that we don't realize that we're ill and the rest of society would prefer if we were just alcoholics so we could be ignored or maybe that's how we think and feel about ourselves ignore me I'm an alcoholic let me keep on drinking myself to death or I'm an alcoholic with an illness maybe I can do something about this if I get some help so we need help I've found I, I haven't found many people who have stopped drinking on their own and feel happy all the time as they can be or sad as they can be because life is sad or angry at the world because the world is an angry place just now and it's not about being right or wrong either it's just expressing in fellowship where we can we share our experience, strength and hope some of it's angry, horrible and nasty because we just feel that way but at least it's a safe place to let off steam and sometimes our fellows will kick up when we are angry and resentful and I saw it recently in a meeting where a person stood up and said why are you talking about God? God provided not only drink but it's there to enjoy yet they were standing there not very sober and very angry that they couldn't keep on drinking safely get drunk, wake up in the morning and just carry on with life 
they woke up in the morning and started drinking again. So it all takes us in different ways. And sometimes recovery is rough as hell. And life is rough as hell. M. Scott Peck said, life is difficult. And he then went on to say many things, but really what he said was, if you accept life is difficult, you can find a way to deal with it. Even when it's, it seems intolerable, impossible. Life is difficult. But if we try to do it on our own, it will get even more impossible. So the purpose of fellowship is to share experience, strength and hope, the horrors and the good stories. So it's not all happy clappy, far from it. People come in happy, joyous and free sometimes and share, and my world is great. And then the next person says, my life is horrible. And it is. But it won't be made better by a drink. So if we can stop drinking, keep sober, life, difficult life, whatever it happens to be, can work. So that's what my video is about, about hope, as much as anything. And when the person stood up and said, what is this thing about God? Why is it religion? How can a religion save me from being an alcoholic? I don't know that he can, but if you have a higher power in your life, that is, you accept you are not God's gift, or you just simply aren't able to stop drinking on your own, you get humility to start learning again, hopefully, or you get so resentful you die early and it's been brought home to me by immediate and close connections that that is so that a person can be so prejudiced against themselves that they cannot tolerate themselves let alone anything else so drink is a, an escape and oblivion follows but you just can't keep doing that and I ended up in um, in intensive care more than once full of bravado, full of ego, and laughing as my insides were falling apart. Not just in my head, just literally, physically falling apart. So that's what happens. So joyfully, I say this morning, I'm not too bad actually. I feel okay. A few things on my mind, and uh, you know, going to meetings stimulates what we can and cannot do. It helps us understand how life can be. So I've been talking about 12 steps this year. <coughs> 12 steps of recovery for a person to live life sober and then the rest of it can work out and January step 1 powerless over alcohol and if I drink life is unmanageable step 2 came to believe that a power greater than me could, could restore me to sanity but the restoration to sanity is only daily and in the moment we can get angry and mad again about life in general but if we actually say to ourselves I am powerless over people, places and things and if I keep on being mad about it I can relapse. The restoration to sanity is to say I can do some things to change my situation and there are some things I can't do. I have to accept what I cannot do, change. But I can accept those things I can change and do something about it. And then in step three it was all about letting go my old attitudes and behaviour and letting in new information so if I let out the old stuff, I've got room for manoeuvre, room for growth. So if I listen, listen to the wisdom of other people, and in the programme of fellowship, founded when religion was a very strong component, it's let go and let God, let God. And if it's God, God works through people. And if he works through people who have information about how to be sober, why not listen? Well, I did, in the end overcoming my resentments about not being all-powerful and om omnipotent in my own life. I'm interdependent with the rest of society. Interdependent, equal, sometimes I have control over the things which I need to have control over, but very often I have no control, powerless over most things. And I don't have to assume that that's a bad thing. Interdependent on all sorts of connections around me and I have to follow the rules of society. So life can work again. It just can. Step four was me and my life story, finding out what worked and what didn't, what were my assets and liabilities. And then in May, it's all been all about sharing the exact nature of my wrongs with another human being and with God as I understand him. So for me, God is truth, love and wisdom, and that works pretty well. But I know my life experience taught me 
as did my dad that it was better to be an atheist and an agnostic and angry at the world and have a, a judgment on it rather than actually do something about my own situation it's all been done to me I could blame every external force for my problem but in the end the only person I, I can turn to really and truthfully is me to do something about it with the help of other people so that's where I've got to so the exact nature of my wrongs I express them to another human being and to the God of my understanding my higher power knowing full well that life can turn me one way or another it can make me more of a believer and, faith and have a faith in living and nature, providence and the universe or I can say there is no such thing as a higher power in my life and it's all about what I do and it's my opinion and my judgement well I'm learning that was never the case try and run it my way people won't cooperate why should they? it's about inter interdependence how to love people and be loved back and be a part of interdependency so <clears throat> I share from the uh, daily reflections here this book daily reflections and I want to emphasize again about meetings of AA and AA as a whole there are no rules or laws in AA it's merely suggestions indeed if it was anything else but suggestions I guess there would be no fellowship because people would be telling, a, telling each other what to do because they knew better than they did so when it comes to a power greater than ourselves in fellowship it is the group conscience of a meeting that is when we want to change something about the way the meeting is or if we want to change something about fellowship it has to be grassroots level who change it so change is very slow in the fellowship but often needed as the world is changing too so no rules no laws but we do observe good conduct as best we can towards each other by being open honest and willing to live the steps so we straighten ourselves out and then work in unity service and recovery to hold the fellowship together and the way we do that is not by making laws or rules there are no violations to be made you can make social violations of being rude obnoxious and horrible but we are forgiving of that as well because when haven't we been rude obnoxious and horrible we can only work it out by personal expression and where else in a place where we are anonymous and it's a sanctuary to find the truth of who we are that's how it works but the problem is when we first come in we judge heavily ourselves for being an alcoholic and it's shameful and guilty often those feelings come through or we shout it from the rooftops and say I'm an alcoholic and I'm going to sort myself out but it doesn't necessarily work when we do that either we do it progressively and carefully and that's what the 12 steps are for so when I, mean, I, when I express my, the exact nature of my wrongs it was actually saying okay these are the things which get in the way of me living life well and these are the things I have which help me live life well so background whenever I need it daily reflections helps me <coughs> and for May 26 it says here turning negative to positive our spiritual and emotional growth in AA so spiritual is the ability to cope with reality and emotional growth is the ability to cope with life as well does not depend so deeply upon success as it does upon our failures and setbacks if you will bear this in mind I think that your slip will have the effect of kicking you upstairs instead of down so who hasn't relapsed after going to their first meeting of AA well I did indeed my first meeting and my second meeting of AA there was five years in between because I was angry stubborn and un unable to say I need help so five years in between the first two and that's nothing to brag about in keeping with the pain and adversity which our founders encountered and overcame in establishing AA 
Bill W, that's Bill Wilson, one of the co-founders, sent us a clear message. A relapse can provide a positive experience towards ab abstinence and a lifetime of recovery. A relapse brings truth to what we hear repeatedly in meetings. Don't take that first drink. It reinforces the belief in the progressive nature of the disease and it drives home the need for and the beauty of humility in our spiritual program. In other words, the ability to keep on learning how to live in the present moment. That's my, my opinion and my belief. But you may have a different one and that's perfectly okay for you if you keep, well, I hope it keeps you sober. Simple truths come in complicated ways to me when I become ego driven. And that's true. If you know what is ego? Well, in a, in a sense for me it's negative because it means I put up barriers. I think I know I'm right. And I think that I will always work it out, ego driven, putting on a brave face, covering up the fear I must have by not speaking my truth. But if I speak the truth and say I just don't know how to do something, most often somebody comes along and says, I've got this, this is what I did. It may not be right for you, but this is what I did. And most often the kernel or the grain of ne necessary, necessary identification is there. And I listen and I learn something. And primarily when it comes to relapse or starting again with the program. It is about applying ourselves to being sober, sober first in front of everything, because if we don't do that, everything else is lost. And I can't emphasize that enough. Sober first and the rest of life can happen. It's really important, I remember that right now, because we have to love, no we don't, we just love people, even when their behavior is awful. Because that person who is in the struggle of addiction is hating themselves and hating their behavior and doing it in a self-destructive way because they are ill and they're out of control. So powerless over alcohol, powerless over the substance will kill us if we don't say, yes, I am powerless over the, this substance and life is unmanageable when I drink. Step one. And then the other steps start to happen. So we can get step one right every day. But it is one day only. It must be one day. And I've learned that. Because if I say to myself, I can be sober for the rest of my life, I am forgetting just how life is difficult. And anything but ev and everything can be turned around. And the drink is only an arm's length away. Because I might be so ecstatically joyous, I don't think I will ever get to where I was before or life is so bad I just can't see what is the point and I'm very wary of that too because I have clinical condition, cl conditions around depression uh, lifelong I guess now I look back and understand the maladies I've had and I also have type 1 diabetes so if I were to drink again what is what are the consequences well actually if I if I am able I can drink safely with type 1 diabetes, but because I'm an alcoholic, if I drink, I know one drink leads to another. So when it says in that reading, don't take that first drink, I have done that before, years ago, and it is some years now. And I have an anniversary coming up, which is good news. I can say life is difficult, but it's fun uh, some of the time, hard some of the time, it feels impossible some of the time. And what do I do when it feels like that? I go to a meeting and tell people. And it doesn't mean I'm going to be able to express myself in a logical way. It normally means I express my feelings. I feel outraged, I feel angry, I feel resentful, or I feel joyous, happy and free. It can be any of those things. And I can flip from one to another, depending on what's going on and what's on my mind. So it is about interdependence, sharing, and freeing ourselves up from old attitudes and behavior, letting go and letting good wisdom back in. It's out there. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in the room of AA. Often and very often it's inside and outside, just as life affords. Needs met, once forgotten today.
I need to be me. So I have enough self-love to be able to love other people in an unconditional way, which is I don't form dependency, which is one person has power of codependency where one person has power over the other. Interdependency, mutuality, understanding, all about being open, honest and willing and working in unity and service and recovery around suggestions to be free of drink on a daily basis. Rules, laws, obediences don't work. So that is my understanding of how the fellowship works. We work together. So at the end of these videos I always share the serenity prayer because it helps me with the can do, can't do things I cannot change and courage to change things I can. So as the person said recently, what has God got to do with it? Well if God has nothing to do with it and you have an understanding of a power greater than yourself is the wisdom of the universe, then we keep on learning. So whatever God is to you or your understanding of a God or a higher power in your life, that's what's important. There is no universal common God within AA. The understandings are unique and authentic to each person depending on their preferences and, and belief systems. So when people share to God in good conscience or whatever, when they use the word God, it is their personal understanding of the God in their lives or the higher power in their lives. And it is unique and authentic because we all have different life experience. But a common understanding may exist across the world in one shape or form. And it's up to you to decide what is right for you, agnostic, atheist, believer, or just happy with a higher power. And I have so many higher powers around me. I'm absolutely delighted these days that I'm not it because I just don't know all the answers. Certainly never do don't want to, can't. So the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience, God grant me the serenity to accept, accept the things I cannot change, cannot change. Courage to change the things I can, that's courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference for me, always in the moment and just for today. Don in London, hello, May 26th, 2009. My video is all about addiction to either substance or behaviour, or both, or whatever it happens to be. Addiction for me was about alcohol, uh, a recovering alcoholic now, one day at a time. And my behaviour could come out in addictive behaviours too, eating, gym, health, you name it, relationships, all those things that we can go to excess. and. I don't know, maybe it's the, just the personality we're born with, or maybe we develop addictions as we go along. And usually it's about not feeling right about ourselves in some way, that we have fear, fear of being not good enough, being, fear of being found out, just fear of not understanding what is going on around us. And we feel less than. So what's it like to be in recovery? Uh, you know, there are messages around self-prejudice or being prejudiced against ourselves because we don't feel right and we start by beating ourselves up and what do we do then? We try and obliterate those feelings so alcohol was my way of trying to, trying to find happiness on a daily basis uh, to I suppose amplify joy and also amplify separation or exclusion because I didn't know how to cope and the worst part of all, all of this I was a trainer and developer of people and I trained and developed people to be able to cope with life, coping life strategies and the danger is if we keep on coping too long we climb a mountain of coping and then we fall off or we free fall because there's nothing left, we've gone too far and for me alcohol was one of my coping strategies and what a daft thing to do, I look back and think or feel. My best thinking kept me drinking and my best feelings these days which is to get a bit of courage, faith and confidence on a daily basis that it's worth living 
without resorting to drink or drugs or behaviour in excess um, in the middle ground of being okay trying to be normal and uh, for me normal is extraordinary and I went to a good meeting last night uh, as I shared in my last video which was a newcomers meeting and I helped make the tea open the windows, close the windows, put the bin stuff out and uh, listened to two people, one with just over a year uh, doing a chair on what it's like to be in recovery and somebody else who was over 16 years or thereabouts and what it's like to be in recovery and how does it feel and both came up with the same answer really it's one day at a time we feel okay or if we're not feeling okay we know why because we understand what is happening so the AA program, the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, full of unique, authentic people, and I cannot speak for them. So when I'm on YouTube doing these videos, it's about my experience, strength and hope, and what helps me, like the literature of the Fellowship, AA. But at every meeting, we share the uh, preamble, which is on this little card, freely available from AA sources. And just before I do that, uh, this book here, The Where to Find in London, it's got about six or seven hundred meetings in that, and I know it said August 2008 on that one, uh, but there is a new one out right about, oh, right about now, so if you think you've got a problem with drinking, there's no harm in going to a meeting and just absorbing, it can be quite frightening to go there, but actually it becomes uh, a surprise that there are a lot of people who may have faced the same dilemmas and uh, whilst remaining unique and authentic this one similarity keeps us, keeps us going to get some I guess open willing honest behaving and helping a, a fellowship keep going through service unity and recovery so the pre preamble of AA sums it all up what are meetings all about what, are, what is this step program and what are the traditions Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is, is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that final bit, you know, whether it's drink or drugs or whatever it happens to be, there's a fellowship out there. And the gift is that if we can get one day sober, we can move on from that, maybe to another and another. And uh, last night there were five people, one month sober, and quite a few newcomers just making their way back and also some making their way back in for, from a relapse or a slip. So we're not perfect and we simply make progr progress. The danger though in all of this, the self-prejudice, prejudice against ourselves will get us into resentments. Uh, the number, number one resentment is always against ourselves because we cannot use our willpower to defeat what we've become, an addict. But if we actually say to ourselves we are powerless over alcohol or whatever it happens to be and life gets unmanageable when we indulge and cannot stop because we just cannot then we find that life can be made into choices made in the day and choices in the short to medium long term about what is good for us and you know one of the things I've learned is what is spiritual and it's not necessarily religious uh, a spirit spiritual life is being open, honest and willing to see reality and uh, sometimes we talk uh, a, life, a life beyond our wildest dreams our wildest dreams were never about reality there's always something far in the distance that maybe we couldn't attain we still need to strive to be happy and find joy at the same time realism is the true spiritual path because if we see real it is spiritual it's being able to appreciate everything around us and also have joy and sadness in our lives so it's not a happy clappy fellowship it's not a cult although some people would like it to be it's just about finding our own path and our own choices and nobody nobody ever is bigger or smaller than anybody else and I learn most from the newcomers about what it is like the horror the absolute horror of addiction and it was horrible so I'm learning every day and here today as per normal, uh, I use As Bill Sees It and the Daily Reflections mainly 
to give some focus on what I what, what this month may be about for me. And I started uh, discussing the 12 step program at the beginning of the year, the step one. Now I'm made step five. And step five uh, is a small paragraph in this summary here, in this 12 by 12, 12 steps and 12 traditions. All good background reading. And it makes me smile when I say that because I had to study it and it took me a long time to realize that. The program is about our feelings. And if we over intellectualize, we'll be back in the malady again before we know where we are. So step five says, admit it to God or a higher power, or just your spiritual understanding, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Uh, Twelve steps deflate ego. Step five is difficult but necessary to sobriety and peace of mind. Confession is an ancient discipline. Without fearless admission of defects, few could say stay sober. What do we receive from step five? Beginning of true kinship with man and God, good conscience or a spiritual path. Lose sense of isolation, receive forgiveness and give it, learn humility, gain honesty and realism about ourselves, necessity for complete honesty, danger of rationalization, how to choose the person in whom to, whom to confide, and it need not be a person in AA. Results are tranquility and consciousness of good God, good conscience or spiritual or reality. Oneness with God and man prepares us for the following steps, which is all about action. And uh, in the, as Bill sees it, because I'm going to run out of time as per usual, it's all about self-prejudice. We hate ourselves for what we became. But anyway, here it says, to be fair-minded. Too often, I think we have deprecated and even derided projects of our friends in the field of alcoholism just because we do not always see eye to eye with them. So, humility here. We should very seriously ask ourselves how many alcoholics have gone on drinking simply because we have failed to cooperate in good spirit with these many agencies, whether they be good, bad or indifferent. No alcoholic should go mad or die merely because he did not come straight to AA at the beginning. Our first objective will be the development of self-restraint. This carries a top priority rating. When we speak or act hastily or rashly, the ability to be fair-minded and tolerant evaporates on the spot. And you know what? We do that most with ourselves first. And then we give it, shove it out to everybody else. It's called BS. And the most important thing is, whatever the route is into recovery, be it uh, AA or some other means, professional, medical, family, or whatever turns you on to, sobriety, we have a serenity prayer which helps us every day. And it goes, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference.